very uh, morning, very early morning to you, Trevor. Old sports writers aren't aren't used to this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, um, anything different about your off season routine in terms of uh, strength and conditioning? Um, I know you worked out at the same place as Patrick Mahomes, uh, but anything you did different this winter? Um, <clears throat> yeah, there's always a couple adjustments that we take into the off season. Um, you know, after we sit down and kind of uh, go over how we felt last year. Um, but mostly it was the same. Um, little things here and there to, to help my body feel better. But um, so I guess more so on the recovery side and um, still just trying to get faster and stronger. That That's the main key. And um, I felt like I did that. I spoke uh, a couple of weeks back and you'd mentioned you, you thought this offense could utilize its speed um, can you talk a little bit about your philosophy and how it's grown in terms of stealing bases? For sure. It's a, I think it's a big part of, of my game and I think it could be a big part of our game as a team. Um, we have a lot of great team speed, I think, you know, with Hampy, Hilliard, Rogers, um, Tapia, you know, these guys can fly. So I think we need to use that. But, uh, for me personally, it was, you know, younger in, in my career, I was a little more timid and uh, not so sure of myself, I guess. And I think with experience, you know, I, as do a lot of things, I got I got more comfortable, um, you know, saw the patterns and saw things that I was looking for that gave me more confidence in stealing bags. And uh, I think it's really just a mindset, you know, especially stealing bases and taking the extra bag. You're, you're aggressive and um, it has to be an aggressive mindset. It can't be a timid one. Thank you, Trevor. Yep. Go ahead, Thomas Harding. Thomas, go ahead. Yes, uh, Trevor. First of all, good morning. Secondly, what about um, parts of your game that maybe you looked at last year and said they need to be better? What were those parts? Um, specifically last year, um, you know, I made more errors than I would have liked. Um, that was the one that, that stuck out to me. and. Um, you know, we addressed that and it was something that, um, you know, I can't blame it on anything but myself, but, you know, just a, a little footwork issue and and really just getting through the ball and driving to my target. Um, so I feel I feel good about that. And, you know, I really pride myself on on making the, the plays that need to be made. And, um, you know, I feel like I've, I've done a good job of that in my career last year. I didn't do a great job. So um, that's that was the main one. Aside from the issues of free agency and contracts, do you look around at all those other shortstops where this is kind of a year of the shortstop? And do you, are you going to kind of compare as you go, maybe even look at the stats, look at how the teams are doing and, and everything else? <clears throat> uh, none more so than usual. Um, you know, I'm not a big comparison guy. Um, I really try to focus on what I can control and, um, you know, I can't control what other guys do, and um, you know, for me, I, I'm worried about winning games here, here as a Rocky, and that's my main goal, and that's what it's always been. So, um, yeah, you know, it's a contract year, but to me, you know, I feel like I think you know I said it before that every year is pretty much that way. So, um, it, you know, I don't think it's the first time that that this is happening. So, um, I'm excited about it, man. I'm I'm excited for the season and. Um, yeah, it's a, there's a great group of shortstops, and um, I know it's fun to play with those guys. Yeah, and the MLB Network had you at the top of the top shortstops right now. I mean, do you, th th does, it, does that feel good? Do you use that as any motivation? Like, hey, someone could come up from behind and take <laughs> my spot, or, you know, th does that matter a lot to you? Well, sure, yeah, it feels good. Um, but, you know... I've never been motivated by by you know anything other than myself or or my own thoughts. You know, um, I, I really try to make it about myself and how I can improve my game. And each year, I think that's on me. So and it's on me to to identify the spots and be honest with myself about where I can get better. And um, that's that's really where my mind's at. But um, it's cool, man. I think it's a it's a super competitive, super talented group of shortstops. I think we all push each other 
um, you know, in one way or another with even if we know it or not. Okay, just a couple a couple quick ones for me. You guys, a um, couple days ago, <coughs> decided you know he wasn't going to be back, at least announced it to us. Was that something the team was aware of? And I know that he had been involved in trying to keep guys focused. Uh, does that change anything in, in that respect? Um, yeah, Ian let us know. Uh, he let us know before releasing, um, you know, on Instagram. So, yeah, no, Des is he's a he's still a big part of our group, man. He's he's still locked in on the group text. Um, you know, I plan on talking to him a lot this spring because um, he, you know, he's been a mentor of mine since he's been here, and he's helped me so much. I think, you know, trying to be a leader and. Um, you know, he has those leadership aspects that, uh, you know, he's attained over his career and, you know, he's 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 built up a special brand like that. And so I love talking to him all the time. And he's he's a you know a big part of my development, I think. And um, so it's he it's not like, you know, he's just going to disappear. He's uh, certainly still a part of, of, our, of our team and, um, you know, may, maybe not so on the field right now, but um, behind the scenes for sure. That last one for me, I know that you often go in with um, goals. You don't like to reveal the numbers that much, but stolen bases, that, that is a finite number, man. Do you have a number that you want to get through this year? Um, I do, yeah, but I'm not going to say it today. Um, maybe at the end of the year, um, you know, we'll, we'll see where we're at, and I'll tell you if it was there or not. Thank very much. Hey, Croak, go ahead, Nick. Yeah, hey Trevor, uh, going in, uh, going into Salt River, and I hope you got, I hope you got to Arizona from Texas, okay. By the way, but um, thank you. Go, go for, the, for the first time. Uh, how different did it feel? No, no Nolan, no Desmond, no David Dahl. Um, lots of changes this offseason. How how different did it feel? And is it is it at all unsettling sort of for you? It's definitely different. Um, <clears throat> you know, there, there's no doubt about that. Um, it's a good vibe though. You know, I feel like guys are excited to play ball. Um, you know, me specifically, you know, I was in Texas during that snowstorm and it was tough, man. And a lot of people have been really struggling with that. So, you know, I think it really, you know, right before we came kind of helped my perspective on, man, I get to come play baseball and, um, you know, everything's great here. So the weather's amazing and, um, so my, my perspective there was enhanced, I think. And, um, but yeah, it, it is different. And it's a little weird without David, without Knowles, without Dez, um, you know, Tony, a lot of guys that have been regulars here for a long time since I've been here. And um, yeah, it's gonna take some getting used to for sure. But, you know, I think it opens up a lot of opportunities for some young guys. And uh, I think they're ready to, to step into that challenge. What? You know, for how does it how does it change how you think of yourself on this team? Are, are you gonna do you feel like you're gonna have to do more? Are you gonna have to be even a louder leader? Um, you know, are, are, do you feel like people are gonna have to lean on you a little bit more? Um, maybe maybe louder, but um, you know, that's not that's not the first thing that comes to mind. Yeah, I think when you think about me, but. Yeah, I think we, you know, I'll do it in my own way. And certainly I would like to be leaned on more for sure. That's that's something that I want. That's something that I'm going to embrace. Um, you know, and I, I'm going to talk to the young guys and, um, you know, let them know that I'm here for them, man. And I'm, you know, I, I want you guys to ask me any any and all the questions that you have. And not that I know everything, but, um, you know, experience has helped me and I feel like, you know, people help me along the way, like Nolan and Chuck and, you know, Tulo, those type of guys. And I, you know, I feel like, you know, it's only right to to help those guys if I if I can. So um, it's it's something that that I'm going to embrace and um, I'm not expecting anything more or anything less for myself. You know, I really focus on preparing for the game each night, each day. And, um, you know, when we go out there and play and just, just let the chips fall where they may, but let's just have some fun and play ball. Cool. And then just last, uh, I know you've been asked this before um, and beyond just the stolen bases, but um, I did the math. You were really, you were trending for a 30, 
thirty and thirty season last year. Um, is that a thing you is that a thing you think about? Would that be would that be like a a thing you would like to check off at some point if possible? Yeah, for sure, it is. Um, <clears throat> I felt like yeah, I was on a, a good pace last year, and um, obviously. You know, we didn't we didn't play enough games, but that's always been on my radar to do that. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's something I want to do. Right on, cool. Thanks, dude. Yep. Uh, Pat Graham with the Associated Press. Pat, Trevor, thank you so much for taking the time. Really appreciate it. Got a couple for you. Um, first of all, Kyle Freeland. You know, basically, you know, came out and was saying, you know, you guys like the underdog role. You like that no one's giving you any credit or, or writing you off. How do you feel about that? Do you like the fact that everyone's saying, okay, no one's gone, the Rockies aren't going to do anything? Yeah, I think that's definitely the, you know, the narrative for sure right now. Um, just with anybody that's not inside our room, um, you know, I, like I've said, we have a very tight knit group, um, you know, and I've said that all along. And, um, you know, I think, you know, losing Nolan is, is obviously going to hurt us, but um, yeah, people are counting us out, and I feel like, um, you know, when you count a group of competitors out like that at, at this level, you know, at the major league level, then um, you, I think you, you kind of instantly put a chip on their shoulder, and um, I think that's that's kind of the attitude that we're coming in with, and it's uh, something that we're going to embrace, and you know, it's uh, at the end of the day, we got to play play the game on the field. You know, it's not it's not played on paper, so. That's where we're at. How do you separate the business of baseball from just having fun on the field? How do you not let that spill over in this? I mean, do you want to get it? Would you like to see a, a deal get done before next year? Or how do you separate the two, and how do you feel about that? Um, yeah, for me, you know, it's uh, there's certain times, you know, that I'll talk about the business of baseball, and that's, uh, you know, that's all part of the plan, I think. Um, you know, there's, and there's also times where there's not to, you know, there, there's not a time to talk about it. So, you know, coming into spring, um, you know, there, there's no talks right now. So um, just to kind of get that out of the way, but we are, uh, we're focused on me, myself, I'm, I'm focused on personally being the best teammate I can be, um, being ready for each, each day here, trying to pour into the young guys. Um, so, that, that that's where my total focus is at and um you know we'll we'll see what happens but as of now i i, I literally do take it day to day and that's something that i pride myself on and i think that's that's a good way to uh not get caught looking too far ahead and last one for me and, and this is no knock against anyone who's going to play third base but when you have an eight-time gold glove winner over there you can maybe know that i can cheat maybe toward the middle a little bit more or do other things because you know he's going to be there how does it change your game not having an eight-time gold glove on the left side with you? <clears throat> yeah, I think you answered it right there. Um, but, you know, Noel was, was very super aggressive, and um, as he should be, man, that's that's why he's the best third baseman in the game. And, um, you know, maybe maybe I'll just play a little more straight up, but, you know, I think Mac, you know, he, he's very rangy himself, and um, that's something that we're going to – we're gonna go out there and, and take ground balls and get used to, and um, I think it'll be the same same type of deal that I had with Nolan. You know, if if Mac can get to it, then he takes it, and um, you know that that's I think that's kind of the rule um, that that we've followed by since I've been here. And um, you know, if if the third baseman can get it, then I think it's an easier play. So um, yeah, it's something that we'll we'll go and address and kind of see how it goes on the field and. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I, I got a lot of confidence in Mac over there. Good time. Yep. Hey, Tracy Ringlesby. Tracy? Hey, Trevor. How are you? I'm good, Tracy. How are you? I'm good. So, you know, it was a few years ago that the Rockies traded uh, Troy Tulowitzki, and the world was going to fall apart. And then this kid came in the next year, hit, hit a couple home runs mm -hmm. on opening day in, uh, in Arizona. I mean, do you think sometimes that, that we get caught up with what somebody's done as opposed to what somebody might be capable of doing and that you can give some of these young guys an opportunity and who knows what comes out of there? Yeah, I think that that's a big part of um, <clears throat> the game today. Um, you know, I think guys are kind of written off early for, 
you know, not either being a big time prospect or, um, you know, not being on the, on the top 100 or, or whatever it may be. But, um, yeah, I think, you know, certain, certain players have that in them and, and I think opportunity is huge. And I think being able to, to play with, um, you know, knowing that you're going to play every day and, and not having to look over your shoulder and, um, you know, kind of worry about messing up and guys can go out there and kind of be themselves. I think that that gives a lot of freedom to the player. And um, so I'm looking forward to seeing some of that from some of our guys, I think. And um, yeah, you know, it was kind of a, a similar situation to me coming up. And, um, you know, I think with, you know, all, all the talent and, and um, I guess potential that, that the young guys have, that's kind of what comes with it. Yes, my other question is, uh, you know, with Nolan wanting to be traded, does that affect whether you want to eventually try to stay with the Rockies or not? Will that have any impact on your eventual decision, or are you totally separate from that? Um, yeah, it's separate. Um, obviously, two different situations. Um, you know, I'm not here to to speak on on you know what happened with Nolan or or any type of things that went on with him and the front office or, or whatever it may be, but. Um, yeah, it's a separate situation for sure. And, um, you know, it's something that, that we're taking day by day, uh, like I said, and it's, uh, you know, I try not to look too far ahead. Um, I'm trying to be where my feet are, which is right here in spring training with the Rockies. So um, that's the way I'm looking at it. And um, yeah, we'll see where it goes. Sure. Go to Mark Stout, Mark. Hi, Trev. Morning. A uh, couple of questions. I'm going to reference what you talked to Thomas Hardy about. First one, technical. You mentioned fastball performance for you and something about hitting uh, hitting them early on the count. Is is that, with the fastball, is that something you're going to do before you get in the box? Is it is it something you can change in the box? Is it guessing? Is it anticipation? What do you mean by that with, you know, getting your fastball and hitting that pitch better? Yeah, it's not, for me... It's not guessing at all. Um, it's really just a couple, I think, mechanical things that I cleaned up, and you know, it's not much. It's just little things, but things to make me a little more direct to the fastball. Um, and I feel really good about those. Those are things we worked on in the off season, and um, you know, I'm, I'm always, I've always been an aggressive hitter, and I never want to want to change that. I think that's a strength of mine, and you know, I think when I step in there, you know, it's time to hit. There, I don't think there's time to waste. There's no you know, taking a pitch just to just to see one. Um, that's really my mindset. And I think with, you know, both of those things put together that, uh, you know, I feel good about taking care of my fastballs that I need to hit. And lastly, Trevor, thanks. You called Chuck our rock. Why? He's so steady, man. He's, uh, you know, whether it's preparation, recovery, you know, being just kind of a presence there for us in the lineup um, in right field. He's, he's been that guy, you know, ever since I've been here. And it's, it's uh, very comfortable, I think, for us, <clears throat> you know, to look back and see Chuck. Um, you know, I'm not sure how the lineup's going to go, but every time I see him up there, I'm like, man, you know, this is going to be a nice A-B. It's going to be professional, and something's probably going to get hit pretty hard. And... Um, it's it's great to have that, and I think it, it rubs off on guys. And um, you know his steadiness and his consistency is what makes him the rock for sure. All right, we have time for a couple more. We we'll go to Michael Spencer. Michael. <clears throat> hey Trevor, um, just your initial reaction when you found out that Nolan had been traded. What was what was that like for you? It was mixed emotions for sure. Um, <clears throat> you know, Noel. We've gotten to become pretty close over the years. And, you know, obviously <clears throat> we played together on the left side and you know, we were very prideful in, in trying to be the, the best left side. And um, so, yeah, you know, like I said, a lot of emotions for sure. Just, um, you know, sad for sure to, have, you know, lose a guy like that, lose a player like that. Um, and then, uh, you know, obviously, you know, he was, um, in a different spot, so I, you know, I think he was kind of relieved to to have you know kind of been been done with the whole thing, you know, the, the trade speculation and all that. So, um, you know, kind of 
kind of happy for him that, that he's going to be in a spot that he's happy. And um, just like I said, a, a lot of whirlwind emotions. And um, yeah, it, it's it's tough to, uh, you know, lose a guy like that. But um, like I said, you know, kind of kind of happy for the guy, too. Is it at all weird for you now to, to be in this spot where you're the veteran because you were the young guy for so for so long, right? And I know you're used to being on the field, but in terms of your presence in the clubhouse, and how have you changed over the years to adjust to that role? <clears throat> um, no, I wouldn't say it's weird to me. Um, you know, I think... You know, I, it's been a, a, a slow adjustment for me, I think, over the past, you know, two, three years. Um, it's something that, that I've embraced because I know this is, uh, you know, this is part of it. This is, you know, um, something that, that comes with being a good player. I, in my opinion, um, guys are going to look to you. They're going to ask you questions. They're going to uh, lean on you. Um, and I think we all, you know, we have all those guys. Um, we all, you know, like Chuck is my guy in that sense, you know, I'm talking to him, um, you know, confiding in him. And um, I think it's a way to help young guys get better. And um, I think that's that's part of the gig um, when it comes to, to being in this situation. I appreciate your time. Yep. All right, two more, go to Sam Bradfield, and then we'll finish up with Thomas. Sam? Morning, Trevor, thanks for your time this morning. Yeah, thank you. Um, I have a couple quick questions. So my first one is you and many other players have mentioned Ian Desmond as a mentor and a good leader in the clubhouse. Um, what is it like specifically about him that makes him such a good leader and has made him such a good mentor for you? Um, for me, I think the similar kind of trajectories of our career, um, and we were just talking about that yesterday, he's, you know, He's so, re I'm so relatable to him to where, you know, he's a shortstop, um, you know, had some success and was in a lot of the same situations that I've been. And so that, I think that's rare to find and, and to have a guy now that, you know, is so readily available to talk about it and to be open and honest about the way he felt and, you know, maybe some of the mistakes that he made or um, some of the things he did right. And, uh, I think just the familiarity with the situation, I think specifically between me and him, is uh, what's what's special, I think. And then um, you've become more like a more vocal leader kind of recently. And then so what have you done to cultivate your own leadership and uh, how do you hope to continue that through this season? Yeah, I think, um, you know, just I think a, one of the biggest things is being honest. Um, you know, having a good grip on, you know, what I need to get better at, what we need to get better at as a team, um, as a leader. You know, I think being honest with yourself kind of shows you ways and, um, you know, lets, lets you figure out how, how to do it a little bit better. And communication is huge. I think that is uh, something that we really need to do a, a better job of this year. And, um, yeah, that, that goes – for everybody from the top down. So um, those are those are some of the things that, I, that I've been focusing on and um, yeah. Well, and then last one for me, um, are there any emerging leaders in the clubhouse that we should keep our eyes on? Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, it's in a lot of these guys to, to do that. Um, you know, I think Marquez is, is taking a step in that, in that direction for sure. Um, <laughs> You know, I think he, you know, he's not the most vocal guy, but, you know, when he talks, uh, people listen. And, um, you know, he, he goes out there on the field and, and backs it up, too. And um, same with Freeland. You know, I, I, I've seen that in him, you know, since I first met him. And, uh, he's He's got that, that grit about him um, and, you know, kind of that dog in him to where, um, you know, whatever he says he's going to do and you know he's going to be super prepared for it so um, there there's a lot of guys like that but um, those are I think the two guys that stick out to me well thanks Trevor yep thank you all right Thomas if you want to wrap it up yeah I want to wrap it up I want to hit you at two ends of the experience scale first of all Brendan Rogers what can you do to help accelerate him and what are the things you see in him that that may make him what um 
the Rockies expected when they drafted him in the first place? I think just being there for him, uh, you know, there's, you know, it's not like uh, I'm going to make him, you know, anything, you know, press the magic button or anything. You know, he's he's super talented, man. He's a, he's a good player, and I think he has a chance to be great. And, um, you know, he, he knows that, and, he, you know, he has a lot of confidence in that. And I think, uh, you know, Everybody, I think everybody that has watched him play can see that, you know, that potential. And um, I think just, just his consistency, um, you know, being more steady. And, uh, you know, I think maybe if anything, that's what I could rub off on him. But um, he's, he's already made huge strides in that. So I think, um, you know, getting regular at bats is going to be huge for him. I think, you know, there's uh, there's a lot to be said for that. And so I, I'm pumped about it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing – the way that um, you know he takes this opportunity and kind of runs with it. And finally, um, I remember talking to Tulo years ago, and he would talk about even within a clubhouse, there are guys at a certain level you can have conversations with that maybe know a little bit more. And um, do you feel like Chuck is that guy? And do you feel like just talking to him, you know more about baseball, and the fact that he talks to you is a compliment that you know that you're at that level with him. <clears throat> yeah, there, there's uh, definitely something to that. Um, I think Nolan was one of those guys for sure. Um, I was, you know, I talked to him all the time about stuff like that. And um, also Chuck, he is definitely that guy. Um, you know, the, the verbiage and just kind of the way that, that people talk about baseball is different sometimes. And um, I think you know, Chuck has had so much success and um, so much consistency that I love talking to him about it. And um, he's he, he always has some good nuggets for me. And, <clears throat> you know, a lot of times what what I think is going to – what he's going to say is, is not what comes out. And then I think about it and I'm like, man, you know, he, he's right. He has a really different perspective on a lot of things. And you know, I think it's good for me to hear that. And um, I think, you know, when he talks to me about it, I think – I give him that different perspective too. Did it take a while to get to that point with him? Yeah, I think so. You know, just kind of slowly um, over time, it happens for sure. And, you, you know, you got to have the conversations or else, you know, the growth is not going to happen. But um, you you learn how guys talk about it and, you know, you kind of get that, that picture of, of what it looks like in your eyes. Thank you. Yep. All right, thank you, Trevor, for taking the time this morning. Yep.